um, I think I've come from uh, a little bit of a long history of background and LWC is when I really started to uh, really grow to love Salesforce because it started to bring me back to a bit more of my um, you know, core web development route. So um, there's a bit of a topic that, that comes to my heart in really trying to get this out there. Um, so a little bit from today, um, obviously just quickly about why uh, LWC, take you through a bit of um, visual force with LWC, um, show a bit of a demo and, and uh, as Vamsi said, uh, you know, what we're actually doing um, at ASX um, with some of the some of the projects we've we've got in play, um, Aura with LWC, and I'll uh, I'll do a, a little live demo of, of um, a real life scenario and we'll Q and A at the end. Um, we can pick up any questions. Really quickly, just about me. Like I said, I've had about seventeen years um, from an enterprise software development perspective, in various roles, generally um, web development related. Um, uh, you know, a lot of that in the, the .NET world and, and outside of Salesforce, but more recently um, dedicated into the Salesforce um, ecosystem and, and loving it. Uh, so at ASX, um, I'm a Salesforce platform architect um, across uh, all of the initiatives at, at uh, ASX. Um, okay. I just love learning. I uh, love going through. So working through, obviously, the certifications, um, and um, also got the, the meals well. And uh, if anybody at any point wants to reach out on LinkedIn, just hit me up and love, you know, love sharing and, and, and helping anybody out. So why LWC? Um, so some things to consider with it. One of the things more, I guess, from a personal perspective, from, from yourself, um, career progression and staying current and um, and how you can use that. I've, uh, I've interviewed a lot of people um, over, over my time and um, LWC from my perspective, if, if you don't want to stay as a kind of a, a back end, pure back end developer really is starting to become part of a stack that, that a, a Salesforce developer needs to have. And, um, and ultimately, the I, I get a lot of you know scenarios where people say oh I've done a little bit of trailhead but I haven't had an opportunity to do it in my real project or I've had no real experience in it and, and that's really what I want this session about to just expose people and make them understand that it doesn't really matter what project you're in if it's Visual Force or Aura what it is there is opportunity to try and try and bring that in and and, and ultimately get yourself exposed to it in real scenarios. Um, Reducing technical debt. Um, so obviously, if you're developing in Visual Force and Aura, ultimately they they're now legacy technologies sitting um, in your in your orgs. And um, the more you can move those pieces out, even if even if they're small pieces, then uh, over time that's just going to reduce the technical debt that's sitting in your org. LWC performs better, um, and ultimately Salesforce have been rewriting a lot of their UIs from their back end to LWC even before it was actually re released out to uh, to all of us to work with, um, and that's how they're actually improving the performance across the, the Lightning platform. Certainly a improved developer experience over Aura. Um, Aura was was okay, um, but it, it, it's much more enjoyable once you get to know and work with, with LWC. Um, Component testability um, with Jest, it has got it built in, um, which, which is a little bit of a bonus um, as well. But the, this session is not necessarily going to really be about how to do LWC. It's more how can that interact with, with other elements um, within the org. So I suppose the question is, I mean, I guess the, the title was probably a little bit clickbaity. Um, LWC always really well. I mean, no, obviously, you know, it's not going to fit every scenario. Um, but what I'd love you to be able to really take away from this is you should always start to consider this now, um, even if it is a Visual Force project or an Aura project or something that you're in, um, really start to consider it, you know, does it make sense to take some of these pieces and move them to LWC? Um, and obviously just overall, there's great compatibility. Um, it, it's, it's mature now within the ecosystem. You know, you can put it into screen flows, quick actions, your record page alongside Visual Force or Aura. So in one way or another, if you're doing any kind of componentized development with, with the front end UI, um, there, there certainly should be capabilities for you to leverage LWC in one way or another. Let's jump into um, LWC specifically alongside uh, Visual Force. 
So putting LWC inside Visual Force, so this is a scenario that you have an existing Visual Force project um, and you might want to swap out an element or a piece of that project and, and, and substitute it with uh, LWC. So the, the good scenarios with those are obviously if you've got a new feature you need to develop um, or if you need to do any kind of significant work as a, as a piece, then you should really start having a think about, okay, does it make sense to maybe uplift that piece and bring it into LWC um, if you can't take the whole, um, the whole piece and rewrite it in one go. It might just be too big to do at the time, but if you start to do a little bit more piecemeal, then maybe over time you could actually uplift the whole, um, you know, visual force experience of, of that uh, into LWC over time. So what it actually uses to get into visual force is a feature called lightning out. Um, and this enables uh, components, uh, Aura or LWC ultimately, to be exposed onto other pages. Um, Lightning Out, it actually doesn't have to expose it just within the Salesforce ecosystem. It can actually expose it to external websites and things as well. Um, so, but that is what it will use to actually embed it into the visual force. So one interesting thing is to do that, um, LWC doesn't actually natively support Lightning Out at least not at this stage. So you do need to actually use Aura as kind of an interface in the middle between the two to allow Visual Force and the LWC component to work together. So ultimately allowing that, that Visual Force page to consume and have that LWC sitting in there. One of the really nice things with this, um, with the concept of lightning out is the, the component will actually natively sit within the DOM. So it's not like it's an iframe or, or some little piece that's um, somewhat separate within it. it. It does come in natively within the page uh, seamlessly. So interactions with it or working with it um, is, is just like it's within that same page. So we have a look down here. Essentially the way this works is you, you'll have your parent Visual Force page, you know, that, might, that, that existing uh, page that you might have. So what you end up having is you have this Aura app, which is going to interact as this interface um, that will expose lightning out. And what it has within that is your LWC component essentially as a resource. So this will do the lightning out exposing this. And then is what happens is you'll have an element, which I'll show in a minute, within your Visual Force page. And this LWC gets injected natively into the actual DOM of the Visual Force page itself. I did want to just put a, um, are we going to focus more on this number one scenario? But the other scenario is you can have uh, Visual Force inside LWC if you did need to go the other way where maybe you've done quite a bit of work in an LWC but you still had this big piece or, or complex piece that was Visual Force. You can do, I guess, a, a more traditional nature of just iframing in um, the the Visual Force into your LWC. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that too much because um, it's, it's it's probably a separate use case. But I did want to point out there is a possibility there. Interacting between the two is a little little harder because it's iframes and things like that. But so in terms of Visual Force, I'm going to focus more on this scenario where you've got your bigger Visual Force and you want to start to remove elements of that and make it um, LWC. So to have this so like i talked about before this requires actually an aura app um so let's say we had here a lwc component a sample lwc so this is just a basic one that um what any standard lwc component would have called sample lwc so you write your new functionality or your, your rewritten piece in your lightning web component you then need to have just this this interface in between which is the aura so i've called this the, the sample aura so what you'll see in your markup for your aura application so this is an application um, you have this lightning out app property and this is what enables this um, ability for components to kind of live within another page within that you then 
add your dependency, which is the LWC. So here you'll see sample LWC is our Lightning Web Component here. Obviously, you could do this with Aura as well. So this dependency could actually be an Aura component if for some reason you, you had these Aura components. Obviously, we're, the whole objective of this session is, is LWC, but um, it, is, it is worth noting that this is basically uh, allowing us to uh, include this component. So once we've got those pieces, we've got our Lightning Web Component written, we've got the Aura app which will allow the exposing of it. We then have a look at the Visual Force page itself. So we need to include the capability for lightning out. So this is just a tag that you have in your Visual Force page, which is uh, Apex include lightning. This piece allows you to have this lightning out capability. You then add a div on your page. All right, so here I've just got a div with an ID. So I've just called it Lightning Component ID. You can name it whatever you want, but it's basically a placeholder. And this is where your Lightning Web Component is going to sit within your Visual Force page. Um, you then just have your standard JavaScript script tags. And what we do is we have this lightning.use. So this is using the dollar lightning is using this kind of include lightning um, libraries that get exposed. And then this is the Aura app. So this is going to load the Aura app, which is exposing our lightning out. The You then do this create component, right? And there's a couple steps in this create, well, there's a couple elements in this create component. So first, what's the component name? So this sample LWC, so that's the one that we had in our previous one that the Aura had the um, that dependency, which allows us to then create this component. We then tell Lightning out where we want this component to load. So this is this Lightning component ID. So this will inject when it loads this component into this div. Um, we've then got this final command, which is, a command that can be run when it's actually finished loading it. So you might have a spinning loader or you might want to set up some default values. You can do whatever you want on this kind of, it's like an on load type function that gets executed um, once it once it comes in. I do have a note of course, caution of, of component capitalization. Um, across Auras and LWCs, obviously they all kind of deal with camel cases and different pieces all a little bit differently. Um, so just be aware if you do have any problems with loading, check to make sure you've kind of got the right capitals and non-capitals and, and, and how things are working. So do we interact between the two? So if we want to interact with our component from the visual force to the child, um, Pretty much everything becomes via the script tags in your Visual Force page. So you, you, you're working from a um, a JavaScript perspective now, not in kind of your Apex world and controllers and things like that. So you need to start to work from a from a JavaScript perspective. Essentially, you get the component from the DOM from the from the Visual Force page. So it's a simple document .query selector and then the name of the component um, itself and, and note kind of how it breaks them out with the, with the hyphens and things in, in kind of like what the LWC does. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward again within your script tags. Let's say we had some properties in our Lightning Web component. So obviously LWC you expose at API and then you have some kind of property. So you can directly interact with that property. Let's say a button clicked in, in in your visual force page you can interact with it straight away just via the um the attribute and and set any api values in your lightning web component um, same thing with calling a function let's say you've got a series of of api functions doing some kind of action load a record anything you want then you can call it and and you can pass parameters through that so let's say you loaded some kind of an object um a record uh, then or, or a record ID, you can pass that through and then have that work within your Lightning Web component. Working the other way um, is similar to any of your Auras or your Lightning Web components, it uses events. So if you want to 
um, do an action from the Lightning Web component, the child, up to the parent, then we use events. So obviously to do events, it's a fairly standard. In your Visual Force page, you have basically a listener. Um, generally, what you would do is you would create this listener in that little onload piece of uh, JavaScript code that I showed earlier. Because um, once it goes on load, then it adds the event listener onto the, the component. So you just do the LWC, which is the, the, uh, the DOM element that we got, add event listener, whatever the event name is, button clicked, and then which function we want to call uh, when it executes. So if from the LWC we wanted to execute and, and pass that up, it's a standard custom event. So it's it's actually the same as if you were going to do a normal uh, LWC event to an LWC parent. It's the same way. The only thing to note, um, so we, do, we throw a new custom event button clicked, um, which obviously is what we were listening for. We were listening for you do need to note you need to do bubbles true and compose true. It's very important because that allows it to break through the shadow DOMs and, and pass up actually up into your visual force page. If you don't have those, your visual force won't actually see this event. Um, and then obviously this is the, the function that would be called um, that we set from the event listener. So again, it's actually nothing, nothing special here. Um, it, it's you should feel quite natural if you've actually done any even LWC or Aura um, in to do with events processing. Um, quick considerations, I guess. Um, look and feel. If you've got a, a Visual Force page that is in a classic look, um, a lot of your LWC styling, especially standard components and things, obviously have your Lightning Experience look. So they don't necessarily gel too well. So generally, your first step you're probably going to want to do is at least get your Visual Force page into your Lightning Experience style sheet so it looks, so you can have a cohesive, so you don't have your Visual Force page in this one component looks completely different. And obviously, there's some fairly standard um actions you can add the style sheet there and, and that does generally a, a, an initial element and there's some more work you can do in that but that, that's a separate exercise so you've got one thing when you're thinking about the architecture when you're doing this is visual force is stateful so you kind of got your apex and things which really has an awareness of the state of everything lwc is not so when you call your functions your, your apex calls from lwc it has no awareness of this visual force state that you might have been doing so you'll have to think about how these components are going to work what information you need to pass pass from visual force to your lightning web component all right a quick demo so this is um Visual Force. So this is actually an existing project where we're working on at the moment at ASX. So it's a, it's actually a community, um, so a customer based community that is very custom, um, but it's all Visual Force. So it's an older Visual Force community, and we had a piece of new functionality that we needed to add into it. So um, it made sense to do this in LWC rather than continuing the technical debt, writing more Visual Force pages and going into it. So ignore the 403. This is a, a sandbox org and things. Um, but if I just show the demo. So again, all of this is Visual Force at the moment. When we click this button, this section in the middle, this new piece of functionality is a Lightning Web component that has just been loaded uh, like we just saw with Lightning Out. So you can see the interaction with this is exactly the same as from a customer perspective as interacting with your Visual Force page. It's seamless. This is also any of these, these middle panels that we're seeing here is all the new functionality that we added all in LWC on top of the Visual Force. So these panels and headers and footers and the rest of the whole community, which, which is significant, is all Visual Force. Um, and we've started adding in Lightning Web components um, into that. Okay, um, so LWC with Aura. So this is a little bit more, more natural. Uh, it, it's easier to do this than the Visual Force because the Visual Force is a little bit of a different concept and, and how you've got to pull them together. Um, so to actually include a Lightning Web component in Aura, so see here we'll have a parent. Aura component, 
and we've got these child lightning web components that we might want to um, put within there. So essentially it actually looks the same as Aura components. So this is, if you wanted to add a, uh, a lightning web component to Aura, this is, this is all you would put. Um, if the child LWC, you pass properties, it, it's, it's essentially the same as if, if you're adding an Aura component. Um, the key is this Aura ID, uh, because that is what will allow you to, um, again, uh, query it in the DOM. Um, so it's very similar to normal Aura, Aura interactions, which we will look at now. So there is a note, L, it, this does not work in the reverse. LWC can't contain Aura. So this LWC component can't or a component. So again, that is something architecturally you need to think about because if you want to rewrite a piece of Aura, you kind of need to start from the bottom of your of your children and work your way up. You can't just rewrite something in the middle and have dependent child Aura components. You need to make sure you rewrite that tree down. Um, so these will look fairly similar. So this is calling your parent Aura down to a child lightning web component again you get your Lightning Web Component in Aura. Um, so the easiest way to reference with that Aura ID. So here we'll see we're assigning our LWC variable to component.findChild LWC, the standard Aura-based, um, very similar to how you would find a component if it was an Aura component. Um, so to call a property, so again, we've got out in our LWC over here, let's say we've got an API um, property called label then in your component, you can pass that through uh, just the same as you kind of work with LWC and, and Aura. They interact as if they're kind of the same thing. You can bind dynamic attributes in that. So this could be a um, an attribute in your Aura component that might be variable. We'll see that actually in my demo where as, as that variable changes, it is bound through and will automatically update in the Lightning Web component as well. If you want to call a method, same thing. So it's, it's lwc.do something. Um, we'll call that API exposed method in your Lightning Web component. So that's essentially the same way as you would um, work with Aura or Lightning Web components. Um, so the child web component, um, this is the wrong slide because it's my visual force one. Um, I'll show you in real life because I'm actually going to show you in the thing. This is supposed to be my child to parent aura, um, but I'll show you the real thing instead. Um, but again, j just, just before, it is using events. So it's essentially the same as you communicating um, from your LWC to aura with the same as aura to aura. Um, it's just It's just an event and you'll pick up the event. And again, I'll actually show you that in, in some real code in a second. Again, considerations. Um, like I said, you can't, auras, um, LWCs can't contain the auras, build from the child up. One thing just to think about if, if you're rewriting existing functionalities and if you're rewriting an aura component to LWC, um, aura is a bidirectional um, binding. So either which way that you change that data, they update each other. LWC is, is one way. So a property passed in won't update it the other way. So it's just something to be aware of that you sometimes have to, it's not a line by line automatically. I'll just rewrite Aura to LWC. Um, you may need to do some considerations of, of how you'll interact and work with that. Small one, um, if you're working with slots or you don't much with slots with LWC, it, the, the, there is a, you can't you can't use LWC in slots if it's nested within Aura. Um, it's a feature that, that isn't compatible. <laughs> and now this is one that, that, that wasn't necessarily documented, but I found out because I couldn't deploy my Lightning Web component when I was replacing one for the other. So what I did is I was naming the LWC the same as my Aura component. Um, and when I was trying to deploy my LWC component, it just kept failing. It actually wasn't giving me any good errors. Um, and so what I actually found out is the naming of your auras and your lightning web components um, actually overlap each other. 
So, and, and I suppose it is the, the reason that you can so easily include an Aura, uh, an LWC component in Aura is because essentially they're working through the name kind of, it's the same namespace. So just be aware that you may need to attach if you're just rewriting uh, and you'll see it in a minute, I, I've, I'm rewriting a paginator, um, but I had to call it paginator LWC um, because otherwise it couldn't deploy because it, it has the same name. All right, let me flick over. So what I did is I have actually taken one of Salesforce's repositories for a component. So if I jump over here, um, what we can see here is um, this this app. So it's a custom app, all in all in Aura. Um, what we've got here, we've got product bundles. I'm just going to go in. All right. Now over here, we've got this little. This is a custom Aura component that sits on the page that does some pagination between two pages. Now, I took something really simple for, the, for this scenario, but it shows you kind of what you can do to really iteratively kind of re, um, rework, say, Aura into LWC. I took this paginator here and said, all right, let's just rewrite this one piece from Aura to LWC, all right? So one key thing is this word OF. Notice it's lowercase. Um, if we have a look here, this is the paginator component, right? So this is in Aura. So this is in that parent Aura component, which is this whole component um, in this panel here. So it has a child paginator. So what you can see here is that um, it has a whole series of properties um, that are bound. So here are the attributes up here and they're being bound through the attributes into the Aura child component. So we've got on previous page, on next page. Now, what I've also written down here is I have a child LWC one. So you'll notice that these two outside of the name are basically identical. So if I save this, deploy this to my org, you'll see all of the, the attribute or the properties are the same. We've actually bound to the function that will be called on next page. Um, and then here, there is a slight difference when we have a look at them on the naming. So the way it picks up the events, um, which is that slide I didn't show, has an on before it. So I'll show you that in a second. So if I refresh this now, we'll actually see a capital O F. So this is kind of how I was showing that this is a different component. And this is actually now the LWC component. And we'll see it works exactly the same. So this is now Aura as a parent with a Lightning Web component, all right? Let me show you how similar this actually looks to show you that um, how easy it can potentially be to rewrite some of your Aura functionality into Lightning Web Components. Now, the whole topic of what functions map to what and how to do that is, is different, um, and, and there can sometimes be nuances and things you need to work with. Um, but the concept is quite simple to get them to work together. As you can see, it was literally just a different name um, to bring in. So if I show you, so we'll actually see over here, a paginator. So this is this is sitting in Aura. So I've got my paginator in Aura, and we'll see down here in the Lightning Web Components, I've got a paginator LWC. So if we have a look at the paginator in Aura, we'll see we have a series of attributes, right? So they are the attributes that that um, if we have a look here, this that we're getting passed through page, pages, total. We can see here page, pages, total. Um, these are the attributes that, that, that are getting passed down into the child. We've got this event registration. So in Aura, you actually have to create event and register it. So that's one thing you actually don't have to do in LWC. You can just um, throw the events and, and kind of pick them up without actually having to define that event. So if we kind of have a look side by side, because over here is my paginator in LWC. And 
you'll see how similar they actually are. So the HTML is 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 the same. Um, a few slight differences in Aura versus LWC and how they kind of do their conditions. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we've got our on click that's calling the components um, JavaScript function. Here we, we, we have the same kind of process. Now, that's fine. That's all or in LWC. So the interesting part, obviously, is if we go to the controllers, um, obviously, first thing you'll see as well is obviously Aura versus LWC kind of use properties and attributes slightly differently. So in, in LWC, instead of defining them um, as, as attributes here, they get defined, defined as API attributes. Um, so here we've got our label pages and totals. Um, we just, it was a slightly different way of, of, of managing the um, page text using these uh, getter methods. But ultimately, here is what you'll see the important part is the events. So remember, we're calling from our child component. So ultimately, if we have a look here, this is our child component. So when we click next, here is our parent component that is seeing this event and doing a new set of records with page two. So in Aura, we did our um, component.get event because we declare this event in Aura and then we do a fire of that event. So in Aura, when we did that, we saw it here in this component up here. We had previous page, so this is what picks up that event, and then we we called that function. This is this is in the parent that when that button is clicked. Um, so correspondingly, in our Lightning Web component, again, it, it's the same way. We, we're using events. We're, we're we're calling. We're firing an event from our child and it's being picked up in the parent aura component. So here we just do a this.dispatch event. We create a new custom event with our name, so previous page. When we click the next button, we dispatch an event called new custom event, next page. Exactly the same as if this was a Lightning Web component, child and parent, right? This, this, is, this is exactly how you do it in, in current LWC. The only difference is an aura component as a parent is actually picking up. So the great thing is, as you start building these child components up into your parent, if you re if when you go to the point of rewriting this parent, you don't have to touch the child component. Um, it worked on its own, and it's working as if the um, as if the parent is the same. So, and that's the great thing about events is it, does, it the child component doesn't really know what its parent is. Um, so you can swap this straight out, rewrite the parent as LWC. You actually won't have to touch your child that you'd already um, rewritten. So like I said, the only difference is when we fired this previous page event in the aura, it just needs to be picked up as the keyword on you'll see here that that is kind of the the definition um, of of how to pick up or get that event. So whereas in the aura it was just previous page, when we're interacting with the LWC it's on previous page. But the definition of what happens is what function gets called is still the same. We'll see that is still the same as that. The only difference was this um, the the event. Uh, the event listener that happened there. All right, so obviously then you, you can continue up the stack. So what we did is this is a real life example of rewriting a piece of an Aura project into LWC. So you can then move and start to rewrite the parent um, as time permits or if, if another component um, needs some work or new functionality. You, you can inject and have these Lightning Web components in there over time without needing to go, oh, this is a huge project. We need to rewrite everything from scratch. A few, I guess, notes and some projects and, and some interesting things to be aware of that you know we came across um, as well. The 
parent CSS um, generally will naturally flow down into your child Lightning Web component. So um, when I actually showed you back here, this was our project where we were sitting in Visual Force and we had child Lightning Web components. You'll see it's a very custom styled. Um, this is this is not uh, this doesn't look like Lightning Experience, um, but all of the parent Visual Force CSS style sheets that we had defined all flowed down and into the the Lightning Web component as well. We didn't have to redefine all of that CSS, which which was certainly nice. I haven't really touched on this session because it's kind of another whole topic, but there is the new Lightning Message Service. Um, and you can kind of go off and look into that if you like, and it can help out with some of these. But but ultimately, the events that I was showing you flows up the your, your DOM tree from your child to your parent and, and to its parent, and you can re-throw it. But it still always has that problem of if you've got a – a component that sits separate um, just out somewhere else, it, it won't necessarily be able to pick up that event. Um, Aura has the concept of your application. Um, so you've got your application event and your component event. Um, so the, the application event was always that one, that global one. It sends it out to everything, anything listening. It doesn't matter where it is in the tree structure. It, it just picks it up. The Lightning Message Service works with that. The nice thing with it, when you throw it, you can throw it, that event from LWC or, or Visual Force, any of those technologies or, or components, and it can be listened to and caught again by any of them. So you can throw it from LWC and it can be picked up into Visual Force. You can throw it from Visual Force and picked up to LWC. But they're global events, so they're kind of your sledgehammer that just goes propagates everywhere. So you try not to use them necessarily if, if you don't need to. Um, because uh, there can be performance implications and things. If you're throwing lots of those, you generally want it to to be in the tree structure if you can. But it, but it's certainly certainly a helpful piece to to have a look into. One note as well is you you if you're if you kind of have libraries or you want to have some common functions, you can share JavaScript actually between LWC Aura and Visual Force. Um, is what you actually do is if you if you think of your Lightning Web components and you look into creating library functions, is what you do is you you export that function. Um, it's what's called an ES6 function. But essentially you, you export it like you would in a in a Lightning Web component. And then you can import that function and call it. Um, similar to LWC. Each Visual Force or LWC, it, it's slightly different to how you reference it and import it, but ultimately what it does mean is you can import a function and call that same function from any of those. So it's great for building up utility libraries or things like that. Um, you don't have to have a Visual Force version or a version, an LWC version. Um, you can have that common library actually working across all of them. The final one is, is just start simple. Um, pick some small things. So if, for instance, sometimes you've, you've got to justify to the project and things like, you know, maybe there's an architect there that, that says, you know, well, it's all Aura, let's stick to Aura. Um, and, and maybe you could go, well, let, let's start to rewrite some of this. So let's say that paginator, for instance, they, they wanted to change a bit of the functionality of how it works, something that those kind of opportunities are great ones to go, well, let's rewrite it um, and let's start there. So I wouldn't straight off the bat go, <clears throat> let's rewrite, you know, all of these big complex pieces and, and get yourself in trouble. Um, I'd certainly start small and it's easier to justify and, and, and maybe you go to, to your architect or maybe you get your own decision or, or whoever you've got to justify it to. Sometimes it's to the business because, you know, there's a little bit more work obviously that might be involved in rewriting something versus just going, ah, oh, let's just stick to what we've got and throw it in there. But the big justification is let's start to remove some technical debt, and that can be a, a longer-term project. <clears throat> but if you do it piecemeal, um, you saw kind of for a simple component like a paginator or something like that, how simple it can be to actually uplift that, rewrite it, and then you've started that journey. Um, and certainly from, from your exposure, it really starts to get you to do some um, LWC work. And the more you do it, 
the more you'll actually enjoy it as well. A few little resources, um, but I might throw it back to Vamp C with uh, any questions. Great. Thanks, Matt. I think we are almost exactly on time as scheduled. <laughs> so we have last 10 minutes for any Q&A. Oh, please feel free to post it in the chat group, and me and Matt can happily take, take it up and answer. So for this one question, and Sakti already answered. So that's good. That's good, because I certainly don't have all of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> There's I, one coming in from Shailaja. Difference between track and API. When exactly we go for track? Sure. Um, so obviously that's a bit more of an LWC specific question. Um, they've got. They're actually two completely different um, concepts in what they achieve. So your your API. Um, is a property um, or like an attribute. So you can pass um, from another, say, a parent um, and interact with the component. It's kind of, at API basically says, I'm a public property that something else can interact with. Um, and it's the same with functions. So if we put, say, for, you know, at API on this function, it now exposes that function as a external public function the same with same with here at track is more when you've got something in your um in your uh, html or, or, or your front end for instance we've got a you know a property somewhere here here's say that page is text right if you wanted that to automatically update based on that property changing so your ui changes automatically and refreshes that's when you need to put an at track property and um, at api actually automatically tracks essentially so these um by nature is automatically tracked but if you had a particular property here that was um a, a name for instance you can put at track if you want that saying that um and probably a bunch of people on the on the line are going hey you know you don't need to do it anymore <laughs> so in fact automatically um as of i don't know a few releases ago uh, salesforce decided that the majority of properties that you're kind of defining like this often are ui based properties and they actually are automatically tracked so if we had um this scenario this property is actually now automatically tracked. you don't need to put the app tracked um there's one caveat to that and that is um complex objects so it, that's that scenario works for say a simple string but if you if you had a complex object that had you know a series of properties within it then you do need to put at track on that because salesforce doesn't automatically track all of the sub properties within that um so there's a couple of those more complex objects that you do still need to put track, but you do need to be aware that you don't actually need to automatically. But that's the difference between API and and essentially track. So I hope that made sense. That, that's cool. Yep. Uh, the next one is from Niran Nagarajan. In the Oro world, we have component events, application events, system events, and can we assume in LWC it's just an event, or are there any? Yeah, so originally when LWC came out, it only had that component event. Um, so when we have a look at this event down here um, and we fire it, it, it's essentially equivalent to a component event. So it goes to the parent. Um, in the Aura world, your application event obviously fires to everything. So anything um, within the DOM can pick it up. So in LWC, out of the box, it actually didn't come with an equivalent. Um, they wrote, there's this pub sub um, component that, that was used for quite some time, which, which allowed you to have that application type where you could throw it and be caught anywhere. So it was called pub sub. 
The replacement to that now, though, is what I talked about before with the Lightning Messaging System. So this Lightning Message Service, have a look up that because that is now the equivalent to the application level uh, or event. Um, essentially, you create like a topic um, that, uh, uh, you know, an event, and you can throw that and, and anything um, can pick it up, which is kind of that, you know, that big global <clears throat> cool thing, like I said, with the Lightning Messaging Service now is that it, although with, you know, an Aura application event, it would still only ever be picked up by Aura components. It didn't it didn't go to the whole wide world of the whole page if there was, say, a Visual Force page or some other component sitting on there, um, whereas now with the Lightning Messaging Service, any component anywhere. So it's kind of like a super uh, application event. And, and technically, you could probably rewrite now your Aura application events to be Lightning Messaging Service as well and, and achieve the same thing. Great. Um, is the recording available? Yes, Chandra and yes for everyone. We will post the recording link after the session. And the next question from Ashish is what you already covered, lightning messaging service is like application event or different? Yeah, so so it's it's essentially the same, but like I said, it's it's um, I don't think it's specifically been written to replace it as such, um, but it's certainly written with that same intent that it's a global um, pub sub when you when you can subscribe to a particular topic and publish to it and um, and, and achieves the same purpose, but, but much bigger because, it, like I said, it can work across any of the components, whereas the Aura application event uh, will only work within your Aura world. That's cool. And the last one is from Ahmad Abdullah. The question is, will the Aura components embedded into LWC impacted by the Aura framework retirement? Uh, so I guess for one, there's been, there's been nothing from Salesforce that I've ever heard of retirement of Aura. And, um, and, and Vamps, you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong there, but uh, Salesforce has traditionally been... The history of backward compatibility. Definitely. Exactly. So, and, and they've been amazing at it, right? So they've, they've done an incredible, and I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but no, they're, they're control, amazing. If anyone remember, uh, even before Visual Force page, there's something called S-Controls, right? So there are still orgs in Classic still running on s control. <laughs> I don't see they, that, that precedes me. So I know the word S control. I've never had to work with one. I think, I think, I think thankfully, um, but to that exact extent, I mean, classic still, still out there. Visual forces, you know, there's, there's nothing on some roadmap to say visual forces going to disappear. And, and I think Aura is the same. The key thing that they're saying is we're not going to do any more development on it. So you won't see new visual force for features. You're not going to see new Aura features. And that's a big reason to move over because it's, it, you know, what one argument you could do is, well, they're not going to remove Aura, so we'll just stay with Aura and we'll stick to it. But the reality is you'll end up with a point where Salesforce will release these great new LWC um, features and they're not going to come out in Aura and you're going to want to leverage them. So the, the further along that journey you are to get to LWC, for instance, there's, the, there's this really cool feature, although there's quite a few limitations to it, with platform events and um, there's this component called MPID, uh, MP API that can subscribe in real time to streaming events um, down to your components. So think of something like that in the future it went, when Salesforce goes further and creates more of these cool things and it's like, well, now we've got a great native component in LWC to do all this great thing like that and you won't have it in Aura because they're not going to add it. So they're, they're kind of the justification to move over is really for the new features that are going to come in the future, uh, less so than just going, well, Salesforce are going to retire it because I don't see that on the horizon and they've certainly had no history of retiring, you know, big frameworks like a visual force or anything like that. Yep. And then there are a couple of, Thank you. That's all good. And probably to wrap it up, any best practices in LWC? I think that's another whole topic. 
you, you've got me on for another hour on that one. <laughs> <laughs> any, any top two or three that you can think of from your experience? Um, I, I think definitely schedule a one. Yeah, look, I think from my perspective, breaking things out into functions and general just good practices. Um, that's one thing that I really see. It's not really an LWC one, but I think just, you know, when you've got big, large functions doing lots of complex things, really just try and break them out. So have smaller functions doing smaller things. Um, okay, I'll give you one um, that I've just kind of on the top of my head. And it's one that Salesforce talk about. It's not always um, it's something you can achieve, but what they talk about is try and break out your properties. So, for instance, we've got label pages um, total. The other way you can certainly do it, obviously, is you could have a, um, you know, settings complex object that has um, label and different properties all within it. So a general best practice that Salesforce talk about as well is break those components out. It makes it much simpler. You get it. You get a far more defined interface to work with that, rather than passing back and forth between your components complex objects, which are harder to maintain. Um, Salesforce doesn't traditionally automatically track them and things like that. So um, and and it's. It, when you're passing complex objects through, there's much better chances that you'll mess those up as well. So that's one that I can think of off the top of my head anyway. Awesome. We are almost on time. I think that covered most of the questions. Perfect. And there are a few others answering the best practices. So. <laughs> Been... Uh, yeah, and 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 uh, you know, I think we we could probably collate some of those, and <laughs> but you know, maybe that's an opportunity for one of you guys out there. You know, take the plunge, do do a session if you've got some good practices and things around uh, LWC and your experiences. You know, yeah. get up, advance, yeah. do a session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always always looking for new speakers. So if anyone is interested to share uh, a separate session on LWC best practices, feel free to reach out. That's great. Thanks, thanks, Matt, for taking your time. I know uh, you have a lot of things. You've been busy, and uh, thanks for putting all the efforts in preparing this uh, wonderful slide pack and the presentation. So we'll share both the slide pack and the recording of the session after the uh, after we close the meetup. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Ramsey. Yep. Enjoy your rest of the day. See you, everyone. Bye.